Bang! Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and today we're gonna check out some knives that I would recommend that I don't think anybody could really go wrong with. Now, I could go on and on for hours through all different kinds of knives that I would recommend, but we just have a few here that we're gonna fly through really quick. No edits, no nothing, let's get it started. So we have the Spider Co. Chef. This is one I definitely recommend. It is made in Taiwan, LC200N steel, which is basically a steel that doesn't rust, or at least it's at the highest level of not rusting. So you're not gonna have to worry about corrosion. It has titanium scales, another material that you're not gonna have to worry about corrosion. So this, this knife is really good for people that have to worry about that, like that are in environments that are corrosive or they're cutting things that are corrosive and will rust their knife. Amazing fit and finish. Very, very smooth. It is on phosphor bronze washers, has a very glassy smoothness, and it carries really good. It's a very lightweight EDC, or not lightweight, it's a very, very slim EDC knife that carries really well. Next, the Giant Mouse Jutland. One of my all time favorite Giant Mouse knives. It has incredible snappy action with the flipper or the hole deployment that works good with the thumb flick and the reverse flick. It has a clip point blade that does come up a little bit, which I'm not a fan of that blade shape. However, this one goes low enough that it actually works really good for EDC. This is kind of like a knife that's kind of the best of both worlds when it comes to, you know, a hunting knife, outdoors knife, slash great EDC knife. Good access to the lock bar, very smooth on the drop. It is riding on caged bearings and then this one has the brown micarta scale. Really good quality micarta. It's gonna be nice and grippy, so if you're in environment or in places where it might get wet or something like that, it's only gonna get grippier. The blade steel is LMAX steel, which that is one steel that I think uh, Giant Mouse does a pretty good job with. Next is, now this one I would recommend for somebody that likes this style of knife, that likes the cleaver, sheep's foot style blades, that wants something a little bit more compact. This is the Berg Blades Slim, and it is extremely, extremely well done. I believe Best Tech is the OEM, M390 steel, fantastic hole deployment action, very snappy, solid detent, great lockup. You can really feel the engagement of the lock. And, you know, it's just a great EDC knife. You're gonna, it's gonna be really good at opening things up. You can definitely use it to break things down. The handle is kind of short, but it's very comfortable. At least in my hand it is. I can get a full grip on it, nice and comfortably. And it comes in so, so many different color options. So there's a lot of flavors with this one. Lots of different color options. And M390 steel and titanium on that one. M390 steel. M390 steel titanium bolster lock with fat carbon fiber. Let's get to the next one. Now the next one is one I've spoke about quite a bit. This is the Rain by Kirby Lambert, the Kirby Lambert Rain. Now this one comes in a lot of flavors as well. This one is the Burlap Micarta version. Now every single knife in this video, I've got full videos on if you wanna check out, but man, the Kirby Lambert Rain Beautiful finish on this blade. One of the most beautiful finishes I, I've seen on a knife. It is a stone wash, but it's almost like a mirror polished stone wash. This swedge, just, I love this blade shape. This is such a gorgeous blade shape. And it's gonna be a very tactical-ish blade shape, meaning this is a blade shape that's very durable. Look at how thick it is. It is very thick, very robust. You're not gonna have to worry about breaking the tip, but it also has a hollow grind, so it's gonna slice pretty good. S35 VN blade steel, titanium bolster lock, and like I said, it comes in lots of different materials as far as handles go, you know, and color options and stuff. Fantastic action, has a good sound to it. Love the sound of it. Very smooth on the drop. Only one form of deployment, but it's a good form. And you know, I I, I like to say that this is kind of a um, if you like if you like knives like Emerson's, this is kind of like a premium Emerson without the price of a premium Emerson. Next is. Uh, Jim Skelton design. Now, this is Jim Skelton's first folding knife design, and I got to say, this is one of the smoothest knives in my collection. It is absolutely fall shut action, especially as far as a frame lock goes. 
Like this thing is Shiro Goroff le level action. Very, it's stupid smooth. Beautiful drop point blade. I absolutely love this blade. You can see the hand set and finish. It has a very low tip, so this is gonna work good for everything you could use it. Like anything you could use a knife for, this is a blade shape that's like a jack of all trades. You can do utility cuts, you can do slicing, turn around and cut straps, you can do good pinch grips. Um, it is a flat grind and then it has a titanium bolster and there is a couple different options as far as handle materials go. The, um, they're all carbon fiber, but they have different options. I don't think there's any micarta ones, but maybe there is, I, I'm not 100%. Good access to the lock bar, very comfortable disengagement, nice comfortable flipper tab. 10 out of 10 action with the flipping action and the clip works great. This is definitely one I recommend. Next is the Kaiser Escort. I've been recommending this one for a while. Now you could also throw the drop bear in here. Right here. You can also throw the drop bear in there. Same thing. You know, these are the Kaiser drop bear and the Kaiser Escort have the clutch lock, which is the best version of a crossbar lock that I've ever experienced. Very, very happy with the action on these. They're just, man, they're so solid, have strong lockup, very ergonomic, very slicey. This one's in 20 CV. The titanium one here is an LC200N. Remember the, the Spyderco Chef we talked about earlier? So it has blade steel that is not going to corrode on you and it also holds a good edge. 20 CV is also very corrosion resistant, not as much as LC200N, but it holds an edge a lot longer. So nice strong lockup, aluminum scales. This one's titanium, but the Escort here is aluminum, but they have a budget option in Rich Light Micarta. Next is the Chavez Kickstop. Now I've been raving about this one, so we're gonna go through it uh, just really quick because I know this one is pricey. This one's about 400 bucks, so it is expensive, but it is incredible. And personally, my favorite Chavez yet. It made it to where the Chavez has an incredible detent. To me, I think Kickstops have some of the best action you can experience as far as flipping action goes because they're able to put the flipper tab in a position that it wouldn't be in if it was attached to the blade. Because like if this was attached to the blade, because that's the, the beauty of it, the, the flipper tab is not attached to the blade. If it was though, it'd be way down here, which would push you way down the handle. So it wouldn't be possible to put it in this position. Otherwise they would have to drop it down lower, which would lose lever leverage. But the fact that they can put it up high because it's not attached makes it where you have tons of leverage. M390 steel, and it is very, very slicey with its hollow ground or dual ground, hollow here, flat here, nice and slicing, great ergos. It is heavy, it is chunky. It does come with another clip if you do not like the skull clip, but what a good knife. Next is one I recently acquired and has just blown me away ever since. Like, it is such a good knife, $120. And yes, I know $120 for D2. I, I don't like that either, but I, I'm willing to make an exception with this one because it is that good. I've been carrying the heck out of it already. I haven't even had it but a couple days and I've been carrying the heck out of it. it. Has some of the best flipping action I've experienced this year and I'm not exaggerating. Like even when you hold up next to kick stops, it's better, it's better. Than, than this. It's better than um, the detent nub. I, I, I don't know exactly what they're doing here. If it's just the leverage from the flipper tab and how comfortable and big it is. But as soon as you break that detent, this thing rockets out. Listen to the detent. You can hear it when it closes. Put you, plus you also have the fuller. Now, some people say this looks like a gas station knife and I understand what they mean. I get what they mean. But this is a budget version of a already super premium knife. So Todd Begg makes a premium version of this, custom versions that are very, very expensive. Then they have a little bit more affordable version and then this is the affordable option. So there's lots of different versions of this design and you, you gotta understand that gas station knives are trying to simulate the real thing. Always remember that. So when you see gas station knives, the reason why they look the way they do is they're attempting to simulate the real deal. Now, this would be considered a budget version of the real deal. And 
it makes it to where it's actually a good quality knife. Granted, it might have some some bells and whistles that that it's, or not bells and whistles, but they it might have some features that really stand out. You know, like the holes on the holes and things like that. You know, the the jimping down here, things like that 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 really make it pop and stand out. But that's also what's really cool about it and what's unique about it and you know and since it's actually done well you know it, it's much different than a gas station knife gas station knives are crap because they're made of crap materials built crappily uh you know bad bad uh fit and finish bad tolerances poor action they have to throw a spring in them in most cases anyways hollow ground blade beautiful drop point blade this one is steel and g10 but damn it they did a good job on this one I'm really liking that. Next, the Spyderco PM2. Now, I could go on and on about all different kinds. This one originally was in Micarta. Um, this one was the, the, the Crew Carta, where it's crew wear steel with Micarta scales, but I have aluminum scales on mine. So, it's just uh, aftermarket scales. Aluminum. What? Crew aluminum, yeah, this is the crew aluminum PM2. Anyways, there are so many different versions of the PM2 that I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. Pick your pick your poison, you'll be good with it because there's so many different flavors. I personally love the crew wear one, and that's the one I recommend the most with the brown micarta. Um, and I, I'm thinking about even switching back to my brown micarta. But anyways, yes, the the Spyderco PM2 compression lock. Um, I did have my CME from OCD for EDC. I need to put it back on there. Very, very smooth, fantastic action. Best hole deployment action, I think, comes from Spyderco's. They were the ones that invented it, as far as I know. Um, but anyways, the beauty of a Spyderco is you're able to use a steel that's very, very well. Ooh, this fucker's sharp. Ooh, excuse my language. This thing is very, very sharp. Um, but you're able to use steels that are actually well heat treated. So just because you bought a knife and you spend a little bit of money on it doesn't mean that knife is well heat treated. Well, Spydercos are well known for the heat treat. So that means they're steels. You could get three different knives all with the same steel. And in most cases, Spyderco is going to outperform them because they have such good quality heat treats. Man, that thing is so sharp. This thing is scary sharp. Anyways, but that's the beauty of Spyderco. So if you ever want to actually experience a good steel, try a Spyderco. And then... We had the Civivi Cubit. Of course, I have to recommend this. It is one of the better budget knives that have came out because that has come out this year. Around 65 bucks comes in a bunch of different colors. 14C28 on blade steel, aluminum handles that are solid, makes it very durable and super lightweight. 14C is made for super thin geometry, which is exactly what this thing has. It's very, very slicey. 14C is a very tough steel, and um, it's actually made for blades that are super thin. So it's it's a perfect steel to put on this application. So I think they did a really good job with it and the button lock action. Every button lock I've tried so far from Civivi Sun Cut or Wee Knives has been phenomenal. Now, just to top it off with the last one, the newest knife, um, newest budget knife that I've acquired and that is the Sun Cut Serene. D2 steel, $46, aluminum scales. And yes, guys, aluminum does wear. So, Personally, I like that. I don't mind that when you uh, when you're using your knife and you know you toss it around because you're using it so much and it gets little wear marks around the edges and little scratches here and there. That's aluminum for you. So if you don't like your knife to have character, then you might not. Aluminum might not be your style. You might want micarta or something. Which there's tons of knives that that have that. This, in this case, it's very lightweight, very strong, very durable, but it does scratch easily. So that's one thing you have to consider. Now, personally, I like that because I don't mind a knife that has a little bit of character to it and has some scuffs around the edges. You know, I think it looks cool. But anyways, this one is, in my opinion, as, as far as right now goes, for the money, remember, for the money, probably the best budget knife you can get. A lot of people are comparing it to the Sashi. Which, yeah, the Sakshi is really good. However, it's, it is much different. I have both of them. I do have the Sakshi, and that's another one I highly recommend. It's a button lock with a drop point blade with the thumb stud action and flipper action. But the one thing that's massively different about the two is the blade. 
the blade on this is much thinner and much slicier. So not saying the Sakshi's uh, not a good cutter because it absolutely is, but the Serene is like, what was it? Nine or 12 thousandths behind the edge, I think. 12 thousandths or something like that. And I think the Sakshi was like 17, 18 thousandths. So, it, and this is a full flat grind. So it, this is a beautifully transitioned grind that's going to slice really good. Nice low tip. And yeah, that's gonna be one of the biggest difference besides the handle scales, obviously. Anyways, just a quick look at some knives that I definitely recommend that I think are awesome. Like I said, I can go on and on and on and on with a hundred more knives, but I don't wanna waste your guys' time. Until next time, peace.